What did you see? <laughs> uh, doing good. This is uh, for me personally. I'm gonna answer that before I get the players. This is the first time I've been able to go out of the practice field without limping and all this stuff. I got my knee replacement surgery done this off season, so I feel great. So good to go there. Yep, did that too. Got to lean up just in case I gotta get my number call. So I just gotta be ready to go. The players. Yeah, uh, really proud of the guys and the work ethic that they've uh, put in since they came in with Ivan and the strength staff. Uh, just really good seeing guys going into year two, uh, the learning, you know, work habits being put in. Obviously, since the young guys got here with the draftees and the veteran guys coming back and getting associated with them and building those relationships, it, uh, it's been special to see. So really like that and uh, the communication out there on the field. You always you see the big difference from year one to year two. I was looking forward to that, and have, uh, I've been really impressed with it so far. Other, what, what, other than Miles Adams, you guys have pretty much completely turned over the interior lines. What's it been like kind of bring, getting that group together and watching them develop? Uh, really just watching you know young guys continue to progress, how fast are they take in information uh, and process things while they're out there. Um, the veteran guys, like obviously bringing Jaron back, who we're obviously very familiar with, and him getting with that group that's been – it's been good, you know, but there's a lot of details that go in. It's a position that's not hard to learn in terms of playbook information, but physically, obviously, it's very challenging. There's no pads on and things like that uh, when they're out here. So, like, the little details I like to see is just, you know, the communication in the run game, you know, the alerts uh, protection-wise, knowing where slides are, are going and things like that and seeing how well are the young guys picking that stuff up, too, when we have a uh, rookie development period. So uh, I would say it's a nice start in that aspect. How, uh, with Bobby Wagner, how, how different would his role be from when it was a couple years ago, or will it be different? Or? Uh, no. I mean, obviously, still obviously dealing with a guy who's like, he's the ultimate leader. Uh, so for those things, I wouldn't expect anything different. What I do appreciate about him is, um, and it speaks to how great of a person he is, very humble. Like, he didn't come in assuming anything, you know, humble, and it's almost uncomfortable for me because I'm like, look, dude, like, <laughs> we all know who you are your work ethic, the kind of man you are, the, the effort you put into your everyday process and the consistency as a player and how he prepares. Uh, but for him, he just wants to work and still earn it even with new teammates. For me, that's beyond admirable. Uh, and for the young guys, I think that's a great thing to be able to learn. But for my expectations in terms of him uh, setting the defense up, his communication out on the field, and he and I uh, being an extension of each other in the communication, it's been great. What has it been like just having him on the practice field again? It's been fun. You know, it's, it's been fun. Uh, just obviously, again, you know, making the calls, him being on the same page, the questions, the level of questions that you get from him in terms of how to play, you know, particular routes and things that's going on out there has been really, uh, been really cool with him. What's different about what this defense is asking you to do for the previous one? Uh, I mean, there's not, there's not a lot of differences. There's, I mean, in terms of the roles and jobs, there's a lot of similarities. You know, and uh, a lot of those questions come up. There's a lot of similarities with a lot of defenses across the league. You know, the thing, the terminology is really what makes it different um, in terms of how you play stuff. So there's not a lot different for him. Can you talk to us about the different coverages now you got in, since, especially when he was first here? How much traffic copying does he do of that? Uh, I would say this. I, I think it's good that, you know, having the experience that he had when he went down to L.A., uh, it gave him a couple of different things and uh, to his package, and obviously there's some carryover from there to here, you know, is what I would say to that. But he's played enough football. He's been in everything. So it's not like there's something that's new to him. Cam mentioned to us that there's not a ton of scheme carryover from what he was doing at Mississippi State to what you guys are going to be acting to do here. What did you see from him to make him feel comfortable he can do this stuff if you're going to be acting to do in college? Uh, really what you're dealing with with him is a guy we met, interviewed him at the Combine. Uh, the measurable stuff obviously is impressive. He's a large man. Long arms, big hands, strong, at the physical at the point of contact. Uh, but he's a guy that has good football awareness and ideas in the fields of things that's going on. So, you know, in terms of transitioning to a different scheme, how you're going to play him, he has all that stuff. You just got to continue to develop and train him and get him up to speed on things. And he's done a nice job so far. He's a guy that's unselfish, physical, rugged. He plays a position that uh, doesn't get a lot of fanfare. You know, we've had guys obviously like Al Woods and Monet. Uh, that have played that position in the past where they eat a lot of double teams, but they help guys like Bobby and Jordan make a lot of tackles and be really productive. So uh, he can definitely, he can continue to do those things for us. What have you learned about Cam's habits and how he just works away from the Really quiet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm sure he, he puts in the time, he takes care of his body for a young kid that's impressive because a lot of those guys don't get that early. But generally with Cam, he and uh, D. Hall, they're trying to find a way to get on the water and go fish. So the, the Mississippi roots have made it out to the West Coast. Without a, 
Tariq, I guess, not being here for a while. Does that change kind of what you're doing cornerback wise at all, or sort of who steps up? Or no, what? just the next man up. Yeah, keep getting uh, the rest of the guys ready. It's a talented group back there, and uh, we keep on pushing forward. We know we just get that much better when he's healthy and ready to roll. But, uh, and, and Witherspoon, what have you kind of seen out of him so far? <laughs> the same uh, guy we, we end up falling in love with during the process. You know, confident, uh, really football aware, great sense of everything, super, super smart. And just the competitiveness of the kid is very unique. You know, we, uh, we're loving that whole process, the whole development stage with him. A lot of the offseason moves the team made were focused on improving the defense and draft and free agency. How confident are, are you that the defense will be better this year? I'm very confident. Like I've said uh, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we're going to be better. We're going to improve. I'm not going to get into all the stuff and say we're going to do this and do that. That's not, I don't get into all those things. The proof is in the pudding, and we'll show that during the course of the year as we continue to progress. But excited and appreciative about what John and Pete have uh, put out here with us, the defensive guys to work with, you know, developmental staff. So we got to get these guys up to speed, and everything's going in the right direction right now. So we just keep on trooping but, forward. But what do you think your uh, edge group is at this point? You're getting a guy like Drake Smith back. You don't get a chance to see what's mm -hmm. last year. Adding in Derek Hall, along with Daryl and, and Boye coming back. How do you kind of view that group? What can Tyreek bring to you guys? And, and what do you, where do you that group kind of sits for you guys as a whole right now? A uh, very talented group, guys that can do the full embodiment of the job. You know, set edges, play the run game, do the things in pass coverage when we do ask them to do that. And obviously they can rush. You know, obviously we got nine and a half sacks apiece out of uh, DT and Chenna last year. Mafia's going to take huge steps in that direction. Obviously that's something we feel like Derek can then be coming too. A guy that's a very talented rusher from what he's shown, uh, but obviously he hasn't done a lot on the practice field, but the early stuff in our uh, drill work and OTAs has been Tariq Smith. You know, he's a very skilled guy with his hands, fluid hips and feet. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, as he, continue, as he continues to progress. Obviously, it's open competition. You know, no, nobody's name has had their uh, starting position written in uh, ink yet. So still got a lot of competition and days of practice left to go. How different is all this from Mike Morris and what he did at Michigan? He had uh, I looked at a cut up on him, you know, before two nights before the draft. It was about 121 snaps of him playing as like a three technique, four technique on the interior D line. You know, because obviously he played at 290, he was on the outside edge. So um, his transition has been really good. I think what's helped him is we've had a, obviously the conversation. People talked about the draft night call when I told him don't back up from the table, just keep on eating. Uh, but he's 297 right now. He's playing with length. He's length. He's playing strong. Uh, and using his hands really, really well. So I think knowing where he is going to be, because he's a super smart kid and uh, really bought in, great work ethic and study habits. You know, I'm excited where he's he's headed. You want him north of 300? And I want him to stay exactly where he's at. And the most important thing is, can you play hard for four quarters? I don't really care where the number's at. When you poured over the film this offseason from last year, was there anything that stood out as like what went wrong, what went right? Just being consistent. Consistency has been, you know, really my my name of the game for this whole offseason. The consistency with fitting the run game the right way. You know, if I got to turn the football back, turn it back. If I'm fast flow spill, be fast flow spill. If I'm a cutback defender, let's do that. But it has to be down after down. There's a discipline to doing that. And again, that doesn't all fall on the players. Coaches, we got to make sure we hold them accountable that, to that too. And obviously cutting back the number of explosives. Control the run game. Don't let people run the football on you. And cut back explosives because explosives lead to points. You fix those two issues that you're going to have a dramatic improvement right there. It's, it's early. Have Mike Deck and Trey responded to how you, uh, how you would expect them if you draft a guy you know, at their spot? Yeah, I mean, they were already naturally competitive guys anyway, so it wasn't like we needed to do something to light a fire underneath them. But I think in human nature, obviously, when you know somebody of that stature comes into the room and things like that, it naturally kind of stirs the pot a little bit, but I think it's good. Can Mike show that last year too? I mean, there were stretches where someone, uh, whether it was Trey or Sidney, whoever, would get a little run at his spot and he kept holding them off. Mike is, uh, he, has a he has a natural competitive nature to him. For a lot of people, human nature, they kind of relax and, and uh, go into cruise control. Mike Jackson has never been like that, you know, the time that we've had him here. He's always had a consistent work ethic to him and always been humble. So to see the steps that he made last year where it was a pleasant surprise to everybody, his work ethic kind of always spoke to that. He's a big, strong kid out there at corner. And, uh, and his game is continuing to get better. I love seeing the confidence, you know, from him that we're seeing now, which is really cool. Whenever you get Jamal back, what can he do for your defense? I mean, I think that's where everyone knows. I mean, we've seen that when he's been healthy, uh, what he brings to us from a playmaking standpoint, his explosiveness, the attention that he creates from, you know, the offense has to give him, it helps the others around him. You know, so the biggest thing, like our number one concern is just make sure he's healthy and ready to go. Andre shared a video on uh, social media of him a year ago running, running around Cones and stuff, just saying, 
you know, where he was at physically, just how much different does he look now than the offseason last year he's coming off that surgery? Uh, Maul? Quandre. Oh, Quandre. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, Quandre looks incredible. You could, uh, We could tell last training camp and even in the early parts of the season, he was still recovering. Like, he wasn't quite himself. Uh, and you saw his play, obviously, he got a lot more comfortable. He played better in the second half of the year. I think, obviously, is giving some credit to the fact that he had to come off a major surgery late in the year from the previous year uh, before. So, saw a huge difference play. Watching him run around now, he looks like Quandre as we know him. What did you like about Julian Love when you watched him on film? What have you seen? He can do so many different things. I mean, you're talking about I can cover man to man, great awareness in zones. He can blitz, good run fit guy. I mean, all the all the tricks of the trade that you got to have as a safety is multi-dimensional on what you can do with him. Uh, it's been highly beneficial. He can play in the post. You can play him in the quarters. You can play him in the box. You can move him out the nickel. Um, again, because of the different things and displacing personnel and how the offense has to identify people and what you can create protection issue-wise for them, it's great when you have guys that have the mental capacity to do multiple things. You know, if you can lock guys in, offense can kind of ID and set things the way they want. But when a guy can play multiple positions, and to not slow him down in his processing because Julian is highly, highly intelligent, it helps you a lot. Is, it, is that what the new sort of safety is becoming, where it's less strong safety, free safety, or just a safety? Yeah, you like to be left and right with safeties as opposed to having to designate somebody. Now, if you have a unique player like a Cam Chancellor, I mean, don't get too, don't complicate it as a coach. Put that guy near the line of scrimmage, let him go wreck the game, you know, for the opponent. But uh, to have a guy to have multiplicity is a is a great thing to have because again it challenges the offense when you can have guys do multiple jobs. Where does uh, Mario Edwards kind of fit into things when he? A uh, guy that can play three technique and five technique as well on the defense. Um, explosive, twitchy. Looking forward to continue to work with him and get our hands on him more. Does Trey look closer to where he was pre-injury? Yes, he does. Yes, yes, he does. It, again, it takes time to come back from things, so he's uh, looks more like the Trey when he first came in as a rook. What do you think of the interception from twenty-eight? He's uh, it was a nice play, really good play. Anything else? Thanks, Thanks. Guys, take care. Enjoy the weekend.